Good morning, it's another day of working in the shop. We're working on the Bombi again today. Got Rhett here, what are we doing? We are building the bars to tension the track. It's one of those days where nobody came to work. Ed, what's going on with you today? Oh, not much, just washing them dig out there. Or, Hope yeah. they get the water on. They hit the water line this morning, so we're out of water, but they are getting it done. We're gonna get the water back up in about an hour. All right, so I talked to my buddy Trent at Barnes Four Wheel Drive, and he sent us everything we needed to make these tensioners. So we've got these that go in right here, these Heim joints, three quarter inch, and now we're just gonna make the bars for it. We're just guessing here because like I said, there's no manual for this, and there's no YouTube tutorial on how to build what we're building here. But I'm thinking that is maximum, like that's as far back as the wheel will ever be to tension the track. Now that we've got the length figured out, we're just gonna have Rhett tack these together and then I'm gonna walk away while he welds them. Barnes doesn't specialize in making things for Bombies, but they do specialize in making really tough tie rods for your Jeeps. So if you have a Bombie that needs a track tensioner or more likely a Jeep that needs to be tough enough to go out and get the job done, hit up Barnes four wheel drive, check out their selection of tie rods. Use the promo code MORE to save 10% at checkout. All right, let's see if these fit. Those are gonna be crazy strong. We're gonna get those all slathered up with anti-seize when we do the final assembly so that they won't rust. Not that we really have a rust problem anyway. This, this snow cat is probably from the 60s and it's got a little bit of surface rust. We really live in an incredible part of the world where the summers are 115 degrees and the winters are 75 and nothing rusts. We got a little bit done today. It's not even a work day. We're supposed to be doing something else. What are we supposed to be doing? Corvairs. We're putting an engine in Rhett's Corvair. So we'll see you like this. Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop and you guessed it. We are working on the Bombi today. Tom is all over this thing. Oh yeah, we're going to do some stuff. What are we doing? We got axle shafts and... Yeah, we're gonna finish assembling the drive axle. Oh, we can measure the track. lots of people. We, got, we did get comments about this. There was concern about just having brakes on this back axle. They're like, you're gonna want it on the drive axle. And I was like, have yeah. we even built the drive axle yet? No, but it's no, gonna have brakes. But it will have brakes on it. So don't you worry none about that. that oh, right? calculation oh, error. Yeah. I thought this was gonna be up higher then it ended up, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted a little help steering by like running the back of the tracks up. Also easier to pop wheelies. Um, a lot of you big brains out there noticed that the drive axle is in the front instead of the back. And the problem with that is when, when this is driving, it puts tension on the top of the track and the slack goes underneath. To get traction, the tension goes all the way across to here, completely unused, does a 180 degree turnaround before it even becomes useful for work. So yes, we do understand that. The Bombi was laid out this way originally. We're just keeping it that way. It just didn't seem to ever be a problem. I have a question for you though. If this is a rear axle and the engine is in the back, is the Bombi gonna go frontwards or is it gonna go backwards? Well, it would go backwards, but we fixed that by flipping this around. So this axle has been inverted. And now not only are we going backwards when we should be going forward, which is actually forward, we are doing it on the correct side of the gear. Now there is a concern. These pinion bearings need to be lubricated. And to do that, they kind of have a system that works. We took that system and turned it on its head, but we didn't ignore it. So what we did is we plugged we, we plugged, filled it with silicone. We plugged, we plugged it the, We plugged the inlet, which is now the outlet, and we drilled a hole in a catch basin that was the outlet that's now the inlet, and these bearings will be getting lubricated, allegedly. If you follow that, you are above average. This is the direction it spins. You can see that ring gear is spinning up over the top, so it would go that way. So engine in the front, frontwards, blah, blah, blah. Now. We flip it over. Oops. We're still spinning it the same way, which means we're loading the same sides of the gears. But now the top of that's going that way. It's like a double negative. Yeah, double negative. A negative times a negative makes positive. 
unless it's your attitude. And if it's your attitude, you better check it at the door. We're gonna be assembling this, but in reality, this is all coming apart to get uh, sandblasted and powder coated. Robbie's gonna be doing that. So we're gonna be dry assembling this. That means we're not gonna be putting any gaskets or seals in place. It's all gonna be dry. So get ready for comments and say, you didn't put in the gasket. Yes. Go ahead and leave those comments if you want. We love the comments. Yeah, the reason we're even doing all this, one, we need to see if we did Get the maths right. right, but also we've got to get the length of the tracks and I want to see it because it looks cool and everybody knows that looking cool is the most important. Step number mm. one is- We got to get the old one out. Are you, did uh, you already get out. it? Rhett's oh, been working oh, today. Oh, like, nice, dude. What, we've been gabbing, talking, causing drama. Rhett's just been at work. You gonna fit? I don't know. Oh, yeah. These little stubby things, they're so tiny. You Looks like you were putting equal torque to what I was doing. Yeah, it was differentiating. <laughs> the gear ratio that we decided to do on this is a 5.44. Four three. Five point four. We went in five thirty eights and they don't make exactly that. So the closest thing they had to that in a four nine inch. So the old Bombi had a six to one. This one has a five point four four. We could be too high geared with the bigger sprocket, but we're not gonna know till we know. We're not gonna know till we go. Let's stack these up with bearings on the old press. Okay. Neither of us are four nine inch people, if you couldn't tell. Have you ever built a four nine inch? No. Have you ever worked on one? No. Neither have I. You both have owned the same one. Though. Yeah. We, we both owned this one for many years. I'm sure there's a direction that this goes on. Is the seal right on the small surface? Or the big one? Oh, I think that's I it. think that's how it goes. But does the seal hold, does this just hold that? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. I think that's it. There's a bunch of Ford 9 inch of hot rodder guys and yeah, stuff that are just laughing at us right their now. Heads. Okay, so. These just get pressed in, just like this. And then this gets pressed on top? Yeah. Mm, I'm getting there. Yeah. We're wondering what do you need. Now what? Do you need to keep going? No, it's on. Now it just needs the ring. The ring. So like Tom said, we've never actually put together four nine inches. So today we are learning together. I think it's gonna work. Probably. I've never seen wheel studs like this. These four nine inches are like working on a Toyota. Like I like the engineering, but it's all foreign to me. Unless it's IFS, I hate IFS. Talking to you, Ford, Chevy, Toyota, Dodge, Jeep. No, I do. They have it. Yeah, but they're the only ones also that don't. Right. Other than the big trucks. Right. I'm talking to anybody with IFS that isn't a sports car. Okay. Or what are you doing, man? NHRA approved. If you know, you know. If you don't know, he's talking about the really long studs. I got a question for you. Okay. People are asking, I know you've told them before, what's the scar on your head from? This is a great story. Okay, okay, yeah. So a few years ago, like 15 years ago, I was scrapping a bunch of cars and I had a uh, minivan up on the lift and I was in a hurry because I always am. So like I- Like a chipmunk. Like a chipmunk, like a squirrel. So I'm up running at a high rate of speed and I catch the tailpipe right there. Boom, I hit it like a cartoon. I ran out from underneath my body. I hovered in the air and then I just got slammed on my back. Colin and Rudy, they're like looking at me and the blood is just just pumping out of there and filling my eye and I'm all blind and I don't know if I stuck myself in the eye or the forehead or whatever. I'm blind in this eye. Anyway, you're right, hilarious. I think it's funny because I know how it ends. He lives and he has this cool tattoo scar 
got to explain the tattoo part. Yeah, so that is a tattoo. That is exhaust soot from a tailpipe of a Chrysler minivan. And I have a matching tattoo right here. That is diesel soot grease and grime from the frame of a Isuzu NPR. Too yeah. bad it didn't do like a little teardrop. I know. Could've been cool. Tell you what, when I go to prison, I gotta jump on the system. They're gonna work? They're gonna work. The moment everyone's been waiting for. So you may have guessed. Oh, we need to, we need to ream these too. This is not the moment you were waiting for yet. We have a lot of things we're stacking on here. You wouldn't typically do this on a road car. Check this out. We have the, the disc goes on first. Second, we put 50% of the adapter on. After that adapter is on, then we install the other 50%. We're gonna have to trim some studs because they've gotta be at least flush with that at a minimum. But then next, this, part of the adapter goes on and then we can bolt this to this these are stumpy little studs here these ones right. might, might not be long enough we might have a problem of studs that are too long and studs that aren't long enough now I can throw this on This is kind of a cool little adapter. Man, I hope these I hope these line up. It looks really trick to me. Looks like it. Really like we just stacked billet aluminum. Stacked a lot of it to make it strong, and we made it aluminum so it's light. And then we added more of it so it's heavy. Wow, that looks really straight and true. That's how they're supposed to fit. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, looks beautiful. Okay, look down that. Look how centered that that is on the That's tires. Just, yeah, I, so, I agree. It's a tiny bit inside. All of Tom's math was correct. And another five. That's ten. It's thirteen point seven five. Tom, you did a pretty good job on this. Nailed it. So when you look at this, it looks like this is a lot higher than that. And that's normal. This is the setup that the Bombi had. It was higher. We're just copying that. I don't know if it's for track dynamics or for ground clearance. doesn't matter. I'm just copying what they did. Those guys in their garage knew what they were doing. The guys in this garage don't. The track rides on the tire, but the track rides in here. So it's not as tall as it looks. It, it looks like it's like... This is the... But this is the true diameter of this sprocket. I say it's four and a half centimeters. It's two and a quarter. Oh, two and a quarter, the maximum. I was right the whole time. I finally figured out what the lower 48 is. It's 48 countries, including America, Mexico, Venezuela, South America. It's the lower half, Australia. That's what the lower 48 is. Thank you. Thanks for clearing that up. All the countries in the bottom hemisphere. Yeah, 48 of them. The lower 48. There's the no more hemisphere. than 48. The lower hemisphere. Unless you live in Australia, then that's the upper. It's from the 49th parallel. Oh. Damn. Yeah. So we're yeah. talking Latin long. And you got to measure off of these? Yeah. You said you were going to get some paracord. I didn't do that. Uh, how much you need? I've got some in my truck. Oh. Enough to make a track. 247 inches. I probably have that much. Let me go see. Greg's going to save our off. bacon. Paracord. And if this isn't enough, I've got the donut of life. Start fresh. Oh, it might be close. Oh, this is dry. Very close. <laughs> yeah, it's plenty. Oh, yeah. Like exactly the right Spot amount. Spot on. Any more take rock. My guess is 247. What do you guys think? 289. 280. 245. 245. Two right, right. What's the, what it's that? your rope. You should Grab know. <laughs> Dang it. Um, I'm gonna go 240. It would not be in his best interest to do I so. I was the closest. Okay, yeah, pull it the same hardness you were pulling before, Matt. I'm thinking about 279. Oh, I lost. 279 to 280, probably 279. Okay. Let's write that down. 
I'm gonna write it down right here. Close this by smoothies. Oh, I had 280. Out. You win, you can buy yeah. them. Go, go to Fizz, get us some Fizz. I guess there's a chance. Should we pull that off, put it on this side, just so we don't have a surprise? Yeah. You wanna measure the other side as well? Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly the same. What do, you, what do you mean, oh, wow? <laughs> well, the chances, the back separate a little bit different, right? They're not exact. That back axle isn't. Hefe's impressed with her work. Well, I'm surprised they adjusted that to the exact same. Well, if anybody needs me, I'll be in my trailer. So, so, so we gotta go four inches shorter than 280. Okay, and that gets you 69 tracks. Do you wanna so, call Dan and see? And s just give him the number? And yeah, tell him what, what we came up with and see if he has any questions. Look at this, two inches was the exact right. Oh, that fits in there good. It's coming together. This is 50% of the steering on this track or 25% total. I don't know what that is in metric. This is the attack angle right here. It's still gonna have a good attack angle. Is that, that's got it, well, is that more or not? You have smaller sprocket, yeah, so was, I don't know. I think it was more before, not much more. Whatever, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna move. Um, um, um. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. We'll see you here tomorrow. Told you we'd be back. Here we are working on the bomb bee again. Killer bee. What is the bomb bee? The bomb bee. Today we're going to be kind of fitting the engine and transmission to see if we left room for it. Oh, we got a dummy case to make see it that? easy. I thought Tom was just really strong. <laughs> He's both. Tom took his engine lift home. Hoist. Is it a hoist? Engine lift? Hoist? It's custom. Lift. Engine, engine installing apparatus went back to his house, so we're going to have to use something even cooler to get this off of the engine. What is this, an engine stand? Engine stand, yeah. Off of the engine holder thing. We're gonna bolt it together and slide it in. Rhett, you're gonna be doing some welding. Also, I have a special project for Jake and Rhett. Oh yeah, we're ready for you. Look at that. I think it might just barely be high enough. It's gonna be close. Whenever somebody upgrades their Jeep suspension, I swoop in there and snatch these out of the trash because they just throw them away because they don't, they're not good for anything anymore. But I love them for motor mounts. These make really, these are very durable, long lasting motor mounts and they're cheap. So Rhett, I need you to cut these off square. A little less than two inches. We just scooch the bombie. I'm gonna get a jack and just pull the back end of the bombie over. Good. And move the back end over, and then we can straighten it back out. After. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Tom has this policy that he's adopted that's work smarter, not harder. I think it's gonna catch on eventually. This would be a lot easier without the cab on here. Too bad the cab is a thousand. Okay, we're gonna set that right down on right there. People are gonna say, is that a 1926 Ford? Or is that a pack of killer bees? As far as nestling's concerned, I don't it's, hate it's it. It's really good. We'll need a little room for a fan. That back seat's gonna get hot. Maybe. With all the exhaust shooting in there? Well, the transmission's right underneath the back seat. We're gonna need a transmission hump in the back. That thing's gotta get way lower to line up the drive shaft. Yeah, it's we know way that. Way lower. See? That's not a thing, man. See you. Yeah. Okay, so the very next step is to pull these exhaust manifolds off. Oh. But first we have to get this suspended again. So go get that hanging tree or whatever it is, whatever they call it. 
Nice. Okay, ready to go up? Yep. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that right. Okay, let's pull this. So, these are for another project. So somehow our exhaust needs to come up, wrap around, come back down and out. So we need something totally different. Can we just run it like that? Oh, no. Yeah. Straight out of the head? Yeah. Oh, oh, what if that came up Go and out around? Yeah. Yeah. So Holly makes some that are symmetrical. These ones, each one's a weird angle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd use the symmetric ones so that you could make the pipes do the same things. You can. We can. We'll check with Holly and see what they've got. Yeah. It's not, it's not awful. Well, let's get these out of our way. We know this is working. Yeah. We know this is I want to try and remove that one bolt. Go down, go down, go down. It's tipping good. How's that looking? Better. close. Hey, you're gonna have a tail shaft on there. Yeah. We can get the short one though. We're about a half a degree off. That's perfect. That's what you want. That's what we want. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. You need a big cigar, man. Dun, 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 dun. So what Tom has is a broken off stud. It's broken clear in there. It's, the, it's like the least ideal situation. Yeah, it's under, it's below the surface. These amazing engines have a weakness, and it is the exhaust studs. The exhaust bolts break inside the block, and we got to get them out. We'll get so them out. So now, we'll get them out. <laughs> so what Tom's doing is twofold. One, he's welding something on we can get a hold of, and two, he's heating the area, and the, the differential of the thermal expansion between the aluminum and the steel is enough that it might let go a little bit. Don't get all technical on it, Matt. We're just gonna get it out. I don't mean to open a can of worms or nothing. Come on, buddy. It's working! It's working! It's almost easier for them to break off, weld on them, and take them out this way. Okay, that is one of the best feelings in the world. Here, set that right there so we can look at it. Check that out. Plus, I wanna to touch it. I know, I can tell you do. There it is. We got these plates from Barnes Four Wheel Drive because they make awesome stuff like this that's just pre-made, on the shelf. If you're gonna be putting an LS in anything, and I mean anything, you're gonna want these. Check it out at barnes4wd.com. Use the promo code MORE for 10% off at checkout. That's what I always do. That's what my mom always does. Is your mom a fan of the channel? Somewhat. Is your dad? They're not real savvy with the technology. It took a half hour to get them to subscribe on the TV. How much does it cost? That's how much is a year yeah, subscription? That's totally what they were asking. They're like, how well we haven't subscribed because I don't know how much it costs. And I'm like, it's free. You can subscribe to as many channels on YouTube as you want for free. And they're like, really? They were blown away. Jeez. They're just subscribing to everything because it's such yeah. a good how can we afford not to? Okay, Tom. Is this the height we want it, but tilted back a little bit more? Here. You're up just about right. I keep thinking it's high, but that actually looks pretty good. I'm at 85 I'm gonna... degrees right now. This just needs to be at 85 degrees also. And it's exactly at 85.8 degrees. We keep telling ourselves that we did it right. Okay, hey, Tom gets suited up. I'm going to put this together. We're going to do that thing where we just do it. I'm having a hard time believing how good this is working. I think that's it right there. Weld it in? Yeah. Okay, well, let's take these bolts out then. Okay, go up, Rhett. This is a pretty sweet engine lift, isn't it, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> It has other uses too. It's a very custom engine lift. I, I think that's what Matt made it for. Yeah. Teamwork. 
Engine mounts are all welded up. I think we're done for the day. Matt took off, so we will be back like this. It's a new day, and we are still here working on this. Let me show you what we have been working on, Rhett. I just probably welded in like, uh, what would you call it, like the skeleton? Rhett just welded in the skeleton of the plate. Tom got these welded in yesterday, and I just want to spread some of this weight out because this metal's a little bit thin. So we're going to be putting these plates right here, welding them strong to this, and then plug welding them there. This plate's going to go in here, and then we're going to put in like a winch tray right here, and maybe a bar with some lights on it. It'll look awesome. Let me tell you what's going on here. This is our feeble attempt to strengthen the front of this. This is, this is strength reinforcement. It's pretty heavy. It's angled. Um, so it's got about a one inch return on here. Then it goes down and went up. This is in the way of our yeah. track significantly. So we're going to be adding some structure to the front of this to make up for cutting this off. We're still gonna leave this plate on underneath, I think. I don't know. So we'll have a tray for a winch. We'll have a bar that goes up and around. There'll be some structure on the inside of this too. Don't you worry your pretty little head. It's not gonna fold in half. All right, I got these motor mounts done and now my dad's putting me on a special project. All right, we have this really awesome Peach Days Festival here in Hurricane. There's a parade, we're gonna be in that. There's a rodeo. The Wrecker's actually going to be helping with that with one of their events with swinging tires and stuff. We've got to build a thing for the Wrecker to make it so that we can do that thing I just said. I don't fully understand it. I don't expect you to yet. But we're going to put the boys on this project and they're going to get it done. And then we can all learn together how this thing works for the rodeo. Alright, we got this all built, ready to go in. I'm just going to weld all these holes and then all the way around fixing this front end up. Close enough. All right, I'm gonna show you what Rhett and Jake are working on for these cow boats. Wrecker's gonna be sitting right here. The boom on the Wrecker is too short for what they need it for. Um, but it's gonna be sitting here with that new boom with the rope dangling off of it. What these cowboys are gonna be doing is they're gonna be starting right here. They're gonna run down. They're gonna drop a person off that person's gonna grab onto the rope off of the boom and hang on horseback. And then the cowboy's gonna have to run down around the barrel and pick the person back up off the rope and then run back across the finish line. So they just didn't want the horses to bump into the back of the wrecker. So they were making the boom bigger. So they're making a boom extension. All right, this is all welded in and finished. We are now ready to go get our winch plate and our bumper. We'll figure that out and work on it later. Inspected. It passed. All right, we're still waiting on the testers that test the soil compaction. I know, I don't know why they have to do it, but they have to. So it's moving at the speed of slow. I can't wait to get this done for one because we are sick of each other. I'm sick of using that porta potty outside. Word. So I know we're jumping all over this thing. We're going front to back, front to back, front to back, front to back. We're now back. we're here. We're gonna set the motor in the engine mounts and then build another engine mount in the back for the motor transmission. And for the back motor mount that hooks up to the transmission. Yeah. Third motor mount transmission mount engine mount is gonna be from Barnes. Now we've mounted this before. This was on the wrecker. So this is a part you can get from Barnes four wheel drive. It's got a polyurethane bushing and these go in here. You got a, some assembly required, but when you're done, you get this awesome mount. We salvaged this off of the record because we ended up not using it. It's gonna work good on the Bombi. Oh. oh! All right, I want to explain to you why this is an engine and it's also a motor. 
the two words don't originate from the same source. So engine originates from the root word of ingenious. Motor originates from the root word of, of motivation or motion. This causes motion and it's ingenious. So this is both a motor and an engine. Wow, we get a twofer. If you try to designate like, oh, motors are electric, engines are internal combustion, mm. um, but also engines are external combustion, like a steam engine, it doesn't really fly because you've got like motorcades and you've got motorcycles. You call them engine cycles. There's the Department of Engine Vehicles. Oh yeah, that doesn't work. Motor mounts. Everybody has motor mounts on their engines. It's fun to debate it, but oh, it's so silly to debate it. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Uh, oh, not working. So that's what that's for. Yeah. Right? I had no idea. I was like, what are we making? But now it's starting to come together. It's hot. I just welded on that and it's hot. That came here. That's it right there. That is the trans mount. Motor mount. Trans motor mount. Motor, trans, engine. I'm all confused now. Let's check on these boys. Oh wow, look at that thing. Think a little cowboy or two? I think that we should not cut this any shorter. The farther away we can get him from the record, the better. Yeah? yeah? The further away it is, the more apt the record is to pop a wheelie when you hang a cowboy on the back of it. I don't think it's gonna do that. How big are these cowboys? They don't weigh more than an 8.1. Hey, turn it off. Take me up. Ah! All right, we got this welded in good enough that it's not going to move now. Next time we take the transmission and engine out, we can finish welding everything up down there. Okay, let's talk about the cooling system a little bit, what we've got thinking. And I'm going to make some heads explode here, but just pay attention. So what we have here is a reverse flow water pump, meaning it spins the opposite direction the crankshaft does, and for good reason. Do you know that reason, Tom? Yeah, it's on the outside of the belt. The belt comes off this and it spins on the back side. Oh, I was going to say, that's the way they made it. I want this to be a pusher fan. I don't want to argue with anybody about it. I just want it to draw in and blow out. No, the heat from the engine isn't going to be too excessive heating up the the coolant. It's a very, it's a very well respected and well known system, especially in like uh, heavy machinery equipment, tractors, stuff like that, where oh, they do don't. They do that. They yeah. pull in from the sides and blow, blow out. out. Yeah. Okay. But since this spins backwards, we have to get a regular rotation fan. So this fan spins this way, and then we flip it backwards. So now, this spins this way. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have to spin it backwards. I'm just doing it for efficiency purposes. So I wonder if, let's get the plasma cutter and just cut this out. And then we'll be able to set this in and kind of see where it is. Okay, Tom. Um, is that gonna come out? I want that to be a permanent feature on this. When we're driving forward, I want that. Sparks and gas shooting out the back. It's okay. I got a mega wrench. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna look. I'll, I'll tell you this much, it's gonna look super cool. It's not gonna look funny or dorky. It might look a little dorky, but it's not gonna look funny. It might look a little funny. It's gonna look funny. But, but it's gonna look cool way. awesome. We had some questions about the brakes maybe freezing up where we have them external like this. And where we live, it just doesn't get like terribly, horribly freezing, freezing cold. A lot of the work that we're gonna be doing is in the daytime. So we'll be up in the mountains on a snowmobile track or whatever. It might be 50, 60 degrees outside when we're there. 
it's really confusing, I guess, if you haven't experienced it. So in the mountains in the summertime, oh, sorry, the winter, when does the snow fall? It's in the winter. Okay, so in the mountains in the winter time, um, it is really bizarre at this, in this particular area, and it's probably a lot of areas, but the nighttime temperatures might be, you know, seven degrees or 15 degrees or 22 degrees, but the daytime temperatures are often, you know, 50, 60, even 70 degrees. I don't think it'll even be a problem like negative 20. I just don't think it's gonna be an issue. Yeah. If it is, we'll change it. I've heard of stories on the Alaskan highway of driving a car and stopping for a second and getting back in it and, and, the, brakes and the brakes were froze. Because when they stepped on the brakes to stop, it melted some of the yeah, frost yeah. and, and then, then it flash freezes. froze. Yeah. Okay. So there's the fan and there's the way it works. Oh, I'm feeling it. Yeah. It's working. What's funny is it's spinning the other way on camera. Is it? Uh, yes. Now it's spinning the right. Okay. Uh, frames per second's messing with our. It spins counterclockwise. Yeah, it's going clockwise. And if you were, it, and if you were looking at it this way, the front of an engine is spinning clockwise. That's the weird thing. How can it be spinning counterclockwise and clockwise at the same time? Like, how does a mirror see things that aren't in front of the mirror? Nobody knows. It's like the lower 48. Nobody even knows what it means. It's just something. People say to sound smart. All right, we're not gonna even try to explain that, but this is pretty cool. So it'll be tons more cooling, and this should cool better than that other engine. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to put rudders back here like an airboat to help me steer. Oh, that much air movement, huh? I can't see. There, all right. So me and Jake, we got this put together. Now we're gonna have my dad come test it. Oh, wow. That might work. We need some tests. <laughs> He's up there pretty high. So now we finally got this boom in its final form and it's in its natural environment. We're gonna show you how it works. So neither of these guys that are riding this horse have done this before, so this should be interesting. It's their first time. I have a feeling during the rodeo, it's gonna be a lot of people's first time, so it'll, we'll see how well it works. <laughs> okay. You better hurry, he's fading. No, I'm just spinning. <laughs> really well. Well, he hung there longer than I ever could have. <laughs> Actually, when I was a kid, I could have. When I was a kid, I'd have climbed this. Rhett, why don't you get up there and climb it? Hey, we want Rhett to give it a go. If you want to come check out the Peach Day Rodeo, there will be a link in the description to where you can get tickets. This is a small town, small event. Tickets are going to go super fast. So if you want to come, you're going to have to get on it. Hang on. <laughs> we talked about it earlier, but we don't want you to miss it if you can make it. We've got the Peach Day celebration coming up in Hurricane, Utah. August 31st to September 2nd. It's gonna be crazy. No matter what, you're not gonna wanna miss the parade Saturday morning. We're gonna be throwing out all kinds of prizes, shirts, whatever. Firing off the cannons. Boom, boom, boom. Friday and Saturday night, we'll be at the rodeo. You're not gonna wanna miss that either because we're gonna have the world's largest off-road wrecker. It's got a big old boom extension on it. There's gonna be a rope hanging from it. Cowboys are gonna be swinging from it like Tarzan. I don't even know why. Come and find out. Well, there you have it, folks. We've got the engine installed sitting on its motor mounts. We've got the fan installed so we know where we're gonna put the radiator. Now we're gonna be tinking on this for a bit. Until next time, thanks for watching.